mess with me, you're gonna learn something. Hey, yeah. You're a fat, ugly. You're my friend, you just can't be a pussy. Obscure internet figure with a cult following of fans. You're Andrew Tate is a marketing genius. Whether you agree or disagree, this guy blew up all over social media, so much so that nobody could ignore. Former kickboxer turned internet sensation, Andrew Tate triggered a lot of people with his dangerous opinions. He mastered selling anti-women ideas and flooded the internet with toxic masculinity. Listen closely guys, today we are gonna look at the rise and fall of Andrew Tate and discuss whether actually his methods were effective and whether or not there was a better route to get to his fame. Welcome back to the channel guys, my name is Sam. Make sure that you tap that subscribe button hit like and tap the bell to stay up to date and make sure you're following all my other social media channels you can stay up to date with all my other content. Fame for misogyny, Tate has boosted his radical sexist views and has managed to go absolutely viral all over the internet, making him this infamous personality across the web. The American British started his career in kickboxing Whilst this was short-lived, his real fame came from when he entered the Big Brother house, which again, this was short-lived as he was removed from the house. After which, he made an absolute fortune in his online webcamming business. And Tate is not afraid to brag how much his girls make him and how much they make themselves. So, you say that he's sexist, but he's empowering a lot of women to make money, whether you agree with it or don't agree with it. From webcams to extreme virality, Andrew Tate took to social media and started producing content that would completely divide the opinions of the world. A scandalous social media career. This is what Andrew Tate had. A scandalous social media career is a perfect way to sum up Andrew Tate's platforms. But where did it actually start? After his appearance in Big Brother in 2006, Andrew Tate took to social media where he first became famous for a series of pretty offensive tweets. However, he has now been scrutinized across all social media platforms, whether that's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. He's kind of been branded the king of toxic masculinity. I mean, not particularly a king that you'd want to be, but a king in its own right. Just prior to his Big Brother experience, Tate was in the public eye with his business, The Hustler University, where members were encouraged to watch his controversial clips which helped boost the virality. Now, I think there's a really important lesson to be learned here. If you have a loyal following and they are consistently watching your clip, maybe they have notifications turned on for when you actually post something, this is gonna help your content go absolutely nuts. And I'm gonna tell you why. So most social media platforms actually push your content to a sample group straight away. These are typically people that follow you and also people that follow the hashtags that you use. This is true in particular for TikTok. They will see how your content performs across this sample group before pushing it out to the absolute masses. And now if you break down what Andrew Tate actually did, although Hustle University wasn't that big in 2016, he had a small group of people where their job was just to engage and watch his content early doors as soon as it was released pretty much. So if you think about the algorithm, the algorithm is basically seeing all these viewers engage and watch his content straight away. So it ultimately assumes this is content that the rest of the world is gonna wanna see. This is one of the reasons that he was able to go viral so quickly with such polarizing views. So how can somebody that is so violent, misogynistic and sexist become so famous across social media? So he gained followers for this exact reason and also because of the Hustler University. Now, Andrew Tate did go on to talk about business and to be fair, he has some really decent views on business outcome and his kind of worth ethic towards keep driving and working hard for what you want. <clears throat> now, as mentioned previously, he had the Hustler University, which meant that people were watching his content straight away, which was driving it out to a sample group, and then the algorithms were just pushing that content all over the web. But what you need to remember is that people actually resonated with what he was actually saying from a controversial standpoint. Now, if you look at the world's population, which is roughly around 8 billion people, all it takes is for about half a percent of those people to actually buy into what he's saying. When you have such polarizing views, it's not that difficult to find that 0.5%. That's still 40 million people that are really gonna resonate with you. That is more than enough to go absolutely crazy over the internet. 
Now, you also have to remember that there is a distinguishing difference between fans and followers. So the fans are the people that really buy into what Andrew Tate says, and they resonate with the content that he puts out. The followers, and this is where he was an absolute genius. The followers are people that do not agree with what he is saying and find his views absolutely disgusting, but they can't turn away. They just follow everything he's doing because they are so outraged. Now, this is just basic human nature, and they struggle to turn away from what he's presenting. Unfortunately, by doing this, you are actually boosting his videos and the rest of his content across the web. It's a massive catch-22. The followers kind of know what they're doing, but ultimately, they were part of the reason that Andrew Tate went so viral. You had such strong difference in opinions. You had people that idolized Andrew Tate, that listened to everything he said, that saw him as a strong male figure. And I'm not going to lie, you saw a lot of women that resonated with him as well. On the other hand, you also saw people that were absolutely disgusted by what he was saying. They thought that his views were completely outdated and nothing but sexist and even dangerous to the population. Now, this is where there is a really important takeaway. If you are going to become a content creator, and I'm not talking about a model or an influencer in, say, a fashion perspective. If you are going to become an influential thought leader on a topic, I think ultimately you have to have a strong opinion. You need to have your views and you need to stick by them. Sitting on the fence will get you nowhere. And this is kind of the reality of becoming an influential thought leader. Not everybody is going to agree with your point of view and you're going to piss some people off. So ultimately, one of the biggest takeaways and one of the biggest things that Andrew Tate did so well is that he divided opinion. And dividing opinion is such a good tool to boost your engagement and go viral. So a few key tips here as an influential thought leader and how to really grow your channel. Pick a topic that's actually controversial and give an opinion on it. You can break down what the topic is, what the background is, and give your opinion on this topic. The second thing is don't be afraid to resonate with a small minority. If you hold a view that's strong, and as long as it's not dangerous, because this is where Andrew Tate kind of went wrong, express your view, give good rationale to it, and then you will find an audience that resonates with you. And if you do what Andrew Tate did, you'll have fans and also followers that cannot turn away. Another good example of someone like this is Donald Trump. Donald Trump had his fans and they also had his followers that couldn't turn away because his views were so polarizing. They just couldn't ignore him. Remember guys, hit the like if you're enjoying this video, tap subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all of our videos. So with such polarizing views, why did so many people still watch him. So Tate was very, very clever in how he kept on growing his network because one of the issues that you can find with having such polarizing views is if the content doesn't end up going viral, you end up not reaching new audiences and you stay kind of within that same circle. What Tate did was he appeared on lots of other people's social media channels. When people came knocking and they wanted to speak to him, whether it was podcasts, short form video content, interviews, he wasn't afraid to go on there and fight in his corner. What's really interesting, if you look at a character like Andrew Tate and you compare them to say a politician, let's say the current Prime Minister Liz Truss. When things go bad and they're in the spotlight, members of parliament do not appear on social media, they also don't appear on interviews, they kind of hide away behind number 10 and basically let the dust settle. On the contrary, Andrew Tate stood up and fought his battle. He got in the ring and he knocked people for 10. This was a really good way to appeal to different audiences. And when I say appeal to different audiences, I'm not saying these people People necessarily liked him, but they certainly noticed him. There are hundreds of occasions where Andrew Tate would go and be interviewed by a strong female woman, would go onto other podcasts, would be questioned and challenged on his views, and he'd give his opinion. His delivery of his narrative was so passionate and so strong, it was near to impossible to ignore him, and then he started to be pushed across multiple different audiences. This again is a really important takeaway if you're going to be an influential thought leader. When people ask you to give opinion on things, and I mean if people invite you to give a talk, to go on a podcast, to interview, no matter how small that arena is, you should be taking these opportunities to give your opinion, to fight your corner, and to basically reach new audiences. Because ultimately, the person that's going to be interviewing you or the person that's going to be creating the content of you, they're going to have a slightly different audience to what you already have. You're going to reach new people, and whether they are fans or whether they are followers, the end result is the same. They're going to watch your content and it's going to make it go viral. But how else did Andrew Tate go viral? And this is again a 
really smart thing that he did. He was not alone in what he was doing. He actually used his social media content to then delegate the work. And he did this through social media affiliate links that people were putting in their bios. This is what we call a chain reaction marketing strategy. And he enabled people through his Hustler University to be able to share his content through their bios, show their support to what he was saying, and basically drive more traffic to his content. The extent to which his content was shared was absolutely phenomenal. Whether you hated it or love it, it was going viral. From WhatsApp group chats to Instagram DMs to sharing directly in email threads, this was going on all over the workplace and in social circles. Ultimately, you could not ignore Andrew Tate. I mean, I don't think I've spoken to anybody who doesn't know who he is, and he's banned on pretty much all social media sites now. So this is where things started to go a little bit wrong for Andrew Tate. He was rising very quickly to social media stardom, and what happens there is you actually become on everyone's radars, including the people at the social media platforms. People at Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, they were all fully aware of him at this point. The content continued to get more polarizing. You had claims that he would only date younger women because they were easier to imprint on, how females shouldn't leave the house, and then also discriminated against homosexuals and other minorities. His views got very, very extreme, and this made it really hard for people to ignore. One of the examples that really took to the press when the ongoing Harvey Weinstein investigation was going on, he actually gave comments that backed the defendant and kind of questioned the media movement. So as he rose to the top of the hill, he was also continuing to accelerate how extreme his comments were. This is where he could have really done with somebody controlling the narrative that he was saying. Now, Andrew Tate, in my opinion, isn't the kind of person who's going to be having a publicist and someone who's going to advise him on what to say and what not to say. Let's be honest, he says what the fuck he wants. Now, where a publicist could have come in handy there is they are going to be media trained. They can kind of look at what he's going to say before he says it and kind of anticipate the reaction, how it's going to go. Ultimately, as we all know, Andrew Tate was cancelled off pretty much all social media sites. And this was because his opinions were viewed to be dangerous. He could have continued with his polarizing views to a certain extent, but because they got so extreme, social media sites found that they needed to ban him due to the safety of other users that are using the platforms. So what was the ultimate demise of Andrew Tate's career? And before we look at the ultimate demise, I think we need to break down actually why Andrew Tate Tate was a marketing genius. Whether you hate him or love him, you cannot ignore him. And for that reason and that reason alone, he is a marketing genius and he was able to rise to stardom. If you look at what he did and we break it down and apply this to different fields, this is a really good way to become an influential thought leader within your space. Unfortunately, Andrew Tate's space was just a very extreme one that realistically nobody should be resonating with. So what did he do well? What did he do well was divide opinion. As discussed, by dividing opinion, you are going to create conversation. You are going to create controversy. You're going to get people people talking. Nobody talks when people sit on the fence. Now, another example of this is Piers Morgan. He was a presenter on daytime TV in the UK, and he actually ended up leaving that because he did cause controversy. Now, Piers Morgan isn't exactly extreme, but because he had an opinion and he stuck to his opinion, fought his corner, he was able to create such a buzz around him as a person. The next thing that Andrew Tate did really well was the Hustler University. Now the Hustler University, he got people to sign up and share his content. He effectively created an influencer marketing stroke affiliate network of his own. And actually what he did was he rewarded people with like 48% commission on new members that they signed up. So basically you've got this word of mouth marketing, almost like a pyramid scheme where people are selling in this university to other people within their network and then into their network and their network onwards with the core focus of the university, which was to share and engage with his content. He was literally making his own content go viral by forcing the engagement and actually tricking the algorithm. <clears throat> now, I think this is incredibly smart. If you want to go viral, you need to have a core fan base initially, which will then push it out to other people. What he did was is he incentivized people with a monetary value to get their other friends to sign up. We've all seen Juice Plus, 
Juice Plus has been going around for ages. It still goes around because you continue that affiliate marketing network. You continue to get other people to sign up who get other people to sign up who get other people to sign up. The only way you end up benefiting from the structure is if you get more people to sign up. More people sign up, more people watch the content, more virality, and then Andrew Tate rises to fame. The next thing that I think is really important is the fact that Andrew Tate did not back down from a battle. Yes, his views were polarizing and very extreme, but if somebody challenged him, he would go on and he would fight his corner. He was not afraid to appear on TV, to appear on podcasts, to appear on other interviews. He would challenge anybody who challenged his opinion. Now, this meant that he was able to appear as an influential thought leader within his space to have such strong and well-researched opinions on what he believed to be true. The next thing, which we've not discussed yet, but it's really important and we discuss it all the time, is the quality of content. His content was so good because it was so short and snappy. Everybody, and I'm pretty sure everybody in the world, has seen a 20 to 30 second clip of Andrew Tate. He gives bite-sized information which is easy to digest. Most people can remember something that he said somewhere down the line. So all of these things combined allowed Andrew Tate to rise to stardom very, very quickly. And had his space been something slightly different from the extreme sexist views that he held, he would probably be one of the most influential thought leaders across social media right now. So what did lead to his ultimate demise? Well, ultimately, his views got so extreme that people really could not ignore. As I mentioned before, the people at the social media platforms saw this as dangerous to its other users. And when protecting other users, although we can debate this for a long time about how well they protect their other users, there was too much pressure on them to cancel Andrew Tate. So ultimately, Tate was boosted off all of these platforms. Now, his content does still get shared a lot. Hence, we are filming this vlog. This vlog is being filmed months after Andrew Tate had been kicked off all social media platforms, but still every day I see his content being shared. There's some really important things that I also want to mention about Andrew Tate, and if we take away his sexist and extreme views, he actually gives really good opinion on some business ideas. You cannot deny that his worth ethic and the ability to basically grow an audience is absolutely phenomenal. And when selling a consumer good or a consumer service, this is an incredibly hard but yet very important skill set that you need to learn. Having an audience or being a content creator stroke influential thought leader within a space means that you'll have distribution built in. You'll be able to distribute your good or your service to an audience who will then continue to buy your product. This is something that everybody needs to remember when trying to start a business, which is why I think his business views were very good. Now, that's my opinion. You might disagree with me. I think Andrew Tate had some very strong and valuable lessons to be learned from a business perspective, but maybe he should have just kept his mouth shut on his opinions on women. Cheers, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's content. Remember, hit the like, hit subscribe, tap the bell icon, and I will see you later.